Thanks very much uh, for inviting me to come and talk to you about one of the new uh, BDS Dragonfly hotspots at Panshanger in Hertfordshire. Um, the BDS invited, I'm local to this site, just live a few miles up the road, so the BDS invited me to help uh, sort of liaise and put, and put the whole project together, but it very much is um, a collaborative project. Um, Panshanger Park itself is owned by Tarmac, um, and they employ rangers on the site uh, to do conservation management. On the site also is the Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust. They have staff on site who also assist and, and help direct management. And also, of course, Hearts County Council are involved I I in the site as well. And here you can see Tim uh, cutting the ribbon when we uh, launched the site earlier this summer in July. And we were blessed with absolutely perfect um, dragonfly weather. Um, before I show the film that, um, that Lauren mentioned, I, I just wanted to give you some background because really background isn't there on the film. The film's going to be available on, on local websites so people already know about the site. So I thought it'd be useful for, for you to hear about some of the background first. So um, Pansanger Park is a 1,000 acre estate right on uh, the western edge of Hartford, and for, for centuries was owned by the Earl's Cowper. Um, the park itself, as we sort of roughly see it now, was designed by Humphrey Repton, who, who along with uh, Capability Brown, was renowned for designing these country parks. He designed it in 1799. Another feature of the, of the park, giving some indication of it, how, how long it's been there really, is the Great Oak, which uh, reputedly has a, a circumference of 7.6 metres. Actually, if any of you have got the latest edition of British Wildlife, it says it's 7.8 metre circumference. So it, 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 I think there's some dispute about actually how big it is. But anyway, it's the, it's the largest single stem oak in, in the country and was allegedly planted by Queen Elizabeth I, who lived at... Uh, Hatfield House, which is just a few miles uh, up the road from Pan's Hangar. In 1953, the estate was sold, and the house, which you can see at the top there, was, was demolished. Um, since the 1980s, it's been owned by Tarmac, and as somebody, I think it was Tim, mentioned earlier, somehow they managed to get permission to extract gravel from the site. Um, but the gravel extraction, at least from the public part of the site, has stopped now, and Tarmac have, uh, have restored the site and opened a large part of it to, to the public. So this is Pan's Hangar today. Now, can, we, can you see that? Yeah. So you can see that the park is... That's open, the part of it that's open to the public is surrounded by this road network here. So we're talking about this bit in the middle here. And you can see that it's a mixture, really, of uh, open canopy deciduous woodland. There's large areas of grassland. And then through the middle of the park, there's this series of lakes, some of which were put there by Humphrey Repton and some of which were filled up with water by, uh, by um, tarmac because they're former gravel pits. And then also linking these lakes is the River Mimram, uh, which is, is a chalk stream. It's the best... Uh, from a biodiversity point of view, best uh, chalk stream in Hertfordshire. Uh, currently, there's around about 75,000 to 100,000 visitors to Pansanger every, every year. I'm not, I think that's total people going. So it could be the same people who are really keen on it going all the time. But, but I think it just does give an idea for the potential kind of mem you know, new members that we could pick up at these dragonfly hotspots. Uh, this shows you what it looks like when you get onto the site. Uh, if you, the car park is in, this, this is called Thieves Lane. I'd love to know why that's called Thieves Lane. Anyway, the car park's just here. So this is what you see when you first get onto the site. This is the edge of Hartford here. Uh, and you can see interpretation panel at the beginning showing a map and what you can see. And there's other interpretation panels as you go around the site. And the, uh, the Dragonfly Trail itself starts down here, and this is a reed bed down here. And the trail, so you start the trail down here, and you basically work your way around these lakes in this area here. 
And this is an example of the lakes. This is uh, Riverside Lake, which is... This is really hard. To, this, this is Riverside Lake here, and this is uh, Kings Lake, which is here. And here's a pyramidal orchid, just to give you a taste, really, of the sort of plants you might come across while you're wandering around in the meadows. So the dragonfly trail itself is a mile and a half long, and it's accessed by all-weather all weather paths, which Tarmac have put in this year. So actually, in the film, you'll see some paths, and you might think, well, that doesn't look like an all-weather path. That's because the film, some bits of the film were made, actually, before they put those paths in. Um, there are interpretive signs throughout the Dragonfly Trail. This is what you see at the beginning of the trail, this nice carved board here. And then also here you can see another board showing the route of the trail, where you are, and some of the dragonflies you might see. Um, there are various viewing points. There's a nice pond dipping platform here in the reed beds. There's a small pool here. And this panel is this panel here, uh, showing all the species that you might see, 19 species of dragonflies. And this panel, in this case, is talking about dragonfly life cycle. But through the park, there are different interpretation panels telling you the dragonflies you're most likely to see and, and what they might be getting up to. Here's another viewing point here, a nicely positioned bench where just sitting from there you get great views of, of dragonflies doing their stuff in, uh, in Kings Lake. And then this is a view of the wildflower meadow. This is sown uh, on the park. It's extensive. It runs along the whole southern edge of all, the, of all those lakes, and it's stuffed full of uh, insect food for, for dragonflies. There's lots of maturing dragonflies in there, females and hawker, hawker dragonflies as well. So if we move on to the, uh, the... I've got a few notes here. I just want to make sure I don't leave anything out. Um, if we move on to the film itself, the film has been made by Will Allen, sitting here. Will, incidentally, sends his apologies uh, for not being able to come, but Saturdays for him is his, like, key day for making money. He's a musician, basically, so he's out uh, playing gigs. Um, but uh, the re So when we were discussing what we wanted to do with the hotspot, one of the ideas came up that it'd be nice to have a film giving an impression of what it was like to walk round the Dragonfly Trail. So a kind of intimate, personal view of, of the Dragonfly Trail. And uh, I knew that, that Will had made a, a film to go with one of his uh, musical pieces, which actually featured quite a lot of dragonflies in it. And I, it occurred to me that he'd be a great person to to do this film, having a feel for dragonflies, but also a sort of feel for getting the atmosphere over uh, of this site and uh, what it's like just to see the dragon, you know, as an ordinary punter, not as a dragonfly expert, really, uh, you know, seeing, seeing what was there. So the film takes us through the dragonfly season. We, st we visited it four times during the summer, at the end of May, end of June, end of July and end of August. And we're fortunate that we saw all the species we wanted to see. You'll see there are 16 species featured on the film. There are 19 allegedly uh, at Pan's Hangar. There were three we ma didn't manage to get. There was Brown Hawker, which was just too... It was, we saw a few, but they were too difficult. Uh, there was Southern Hawker, which we never saw on the Dragonfly Trail. It's just in the woodland. And also Broad-Bodied Chaser, which... I just saw one female once, so I don't think it's a, a regular species there. On the plus side, we found a scarce chaser, which hadn't been recorded before. So it just gives you a feel for you know, what could turn up on, on any visit anyway. The film takes you through the key, the key viewing points at the, at the site and shows the species you might find there and, uh, and the, some of their behaviour as well. Um, the film is going to be made available on the, uh, on the Panshanger Park website, so people wanting to visit the, the site can, will find it there, and also, I believe, on the Hearts of Middlesex Wildlife Trust website as well. Um, the film's been commissioned by Tarmac. Uh, they've seen 
the, the kind of trailer that I'm going to show you in a minute. And they're, they're ha very happy for, for us to show, show the film here. But I do want to stress that it isn't finished yet. So Lauren was really keen that we showed it at, the, at this meeting. We're planning to have the finished item ready for the Dragonfly season next spring. And there are a few edits, I think, that, need, that still need doing. And at the moment, there's no captions or anything, no expl explanation on it either. But I thought, as you're all pretty familiar with dragonflies, you wouldn't really need any explanatory, uh, any explanatory captions anyway. So I think that's all I wanted to say about the film. So Lauren is now going to do the business and get the film made. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you.